<laughs> All right, well, let's get into some more of the spoiler talk. Episode 1.5, which is Lemon Scented You, um, is really where you come... Episode 1.5? 5, I know. It's very official. Um, oh, episode 5. Yes, season one. episode 5. Oh, my God. Five, I was like, yes. wait a second. I missed one? <laughs> there was one in between, one and two? I had no idea. Episode 5. Okay, um, episode 5. Uh, how would you kind of describe him? He seems pretty desperate, you know, at that point. Like, he's actually been turned... This guy that does is usually pressing other people, he's in a weird situation right now. Yeah, he's, I mean, you know, you can imagine, I mean, I don't know if you can imagine, you've never been a leprechaun who can pull gold (laughs) coins out of thin air, but he's a guy who's always had um, as much money as he wants at his disposal. He's had all the charm and good luck available to him uh, at any moment. And he loses his his lucky coin. He loses his life force. He loses the thing that that, uh, gives him his spark. And he, st- he starts to go downhill. So based the setup of the character in the beginning is we meet a guy, it's a leprechaun who's lost his luck, you know, which is just so much fun to so play, great. obviously. So, um, so that's where we meet him when he, he comes to Laura and he obviously needs to get his coin back or nothing will ever be the same for him. Uh, and what he doesn't count on is that his coin has reanimated her and given her superhuman dead woman powers. Yeah. And she can do anything she wants to him. And in, in his first attempt to get his coin back, he thinks that he's just going to be able to, like, grab it out of her or something. And she flicks him across the room, and he goes <laughs> flying. And it's a slow, dawning process where he realizes that it's not going to be quite as easy as he thought. It's so great. And it's just to see this little, this little Emily wiping you out across the room. Uh, hopefully no other splits in the head or face or anything. Emily was Emily so was, gentle she was all good. Yeah, <laughs> Ricky, mean, mean, nasty, rough man. Emily, so gentle. So tell me a little bit about just in that episode, we really kind of get the vibe between the two of them. Yeah. And when she shows that she has an upper hand, um, you, I love that you're calling her dead wife the whole time. That's your name for her. Um, uh, it's really kind of a role reversal. And was that something that you guys dialed into immediately from the script? Or was that something that you guys just kind of played with and it came out in the rapport? It's, I mean, it's all in the setup. So mm-hmm. it's just it's just there for you to play, which is lovely. I love the dynamic and the chemistry between the two characters. You know. It's so fun to see a guy who's so large and imposing. And when we meet him, he's this ass kicker who's, yeah. you know, getting in this huge fight. And we see that he's very physically capable and scary. Um, and then he has to spend the rest of the season uh, kowtowing to this girl who's, like, about this big <laughs> uh, because he can't physically dominate her. Uh, and they're just both such... Um, awful people yeah they're they're <laughs> it, perfect road trip partners they're just, just misery together they're just awful they're so mean and <laughs> nasty and they just like take huge chunks out of each other but with both of them um there's a real heart beneath mm-hmm. it and you can feel that um and i think and well i know it's because they both are very ashamed of things that they've done yeah um so there's this like th- throbbing moral center to both of them where um, there's a ton of guilt on both sides, um, and at the end of the season, we'll find out where Mad Sweeney's guilt comes from. 